This is important information that we shouldn't let slip away. I mean, people should know about it, and we should value that history. So I'll get off that soapbox and move on. Um, Jim had mentioned that we did have the letters go out recently to the Tall Oak residents with the Conservancy easement to uh, make an appointment to meet with us one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, I have started um, to be contacted, so as of now, I have four appointments set, so that is moving forward. Um, and that's all I'll say at this time. Uh, we will move on to the standing committees, and we'll start with finance, Trustee Daly. If you've heard me refer to a couple times tonight, finance committee met, and we looked at a framework for the budget, uh, and actually agreed upon the dollar amounts that would go into uh, the various accounts, so, if all goes according to plan, Treasurer Hensley will have the paperwork at the March meeting for uh, approval of the budget uh, or whatever legal steps we need to take. Presentation of the budget. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what we've, uh, in a nutshell, what we've done <laughs> is there were some reductions in requests, but realizing that we have the roughly $2 million in savings that we've had ever since we've been on the board and in an effort to once again try to spend that now to save some taxpayer money. We've taken some money out of there to finance projects, finance our uh, capital fund that we've been developing last year and this, this coming budget year, and complete the budget. If all goes accordingly, our $2 million savings will go down to roughly, and this is a guesstimate at best, maybe one and a quarter million. So we're still being fine financial shape, but that can go up and down depending on everything that you know we've all been through before. Uh, so very little what's cut from the budget, uh, very few, you know, some, some of the things on public works, but there is the extra money in there, as I mentioned earlier, for the streets. There's also roughly $90,000 in this budget, which is approximately a third of the debt of the public works building after we make a year's payment, another year's payment, that we can potentially use, if we so decide as a group, to pay that now. Because the whole debt is due in 16? 2016. Uh, so we funded a number of projects, a street light one, uh, if the board approves when we uh, present it, will be in there the assistant hearing uh, uh, that Kathy presented, I mentioned it to the finance committee tonight, is in there and should be approved. It, overall, I think it's a solid budget and good effort by everybody involved. And if it doesn't work, it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thank everybody for the time. I think there was a good effort put in. I think uh, everybody's honing, uh, working on the budget a little bit better. So, thank you. Well, really, uh, to top that, we. I've been at this now, this is my fifth year, working with everybody here, working with Kelly, and Kelly's got my way, our way, down to an arc. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I hear from, Frank Sinatra in the distance. From the, first, from the first year where we spent hours and hours nib, you know, nibbling back and trying and cuts and whatnot, to this year, it just went very, very smooth. Uh, and. The responsibility that really falls on Kelly's side. She did a good job, uh, made my job so easier. So thanks. And thank you from someone who had put a budget together that we didn't have to cut it down to the home. Okay. Any further discussion? Let's move on to Public Works, Trustee Walkington. Not much going on, but I think we just have to commend Jeff and Dave and the snow plowing outfit again this uh, this month. This month again, hopefully they, we don't want to have to put in another month. And I do have a question. Pray for good luck. Are you going to call Kevin tomorrow or am I about him picking up the side? <laughs> <laughs> I might have to drive to Green Bay to catch it. We'll work, we'll work on something. Okay. Okay, public safety, Trustee Grease. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, we had a public safety meeting tonight. Uh, the discussion was actually Jerry and I were looking at the annual police reports and trying to make heads or tails of which way, you know, how, how much policing was actually done within the village and everything else. Uh, we just 
just looking at them that we find in the Times and just came up with some they they're spending a lot of a lot of time here but we're not, you know, the calls and the way it was all set up was really confusing. So but we uh, we kinda agreed we're gonna wait to see this new program that is coming in and before we ask any more questions on it and uh, it looks great. You know, this is what we've been pretty much asking for for a few years. Uh, one other thing is that the mayor and I were got together and we were just talking about the preparedness, you know, and, and what's going to happen and stuff like that in case of a, a, a disaster, train, you know, train derailment or something like that. And I would talk to one of these chiefs. I want to go talk to another one, but I also want to talk to some of the EMA. Do you mean the fire chief, right? Fire chief, I mean, sorry, the fire chief. <laughs> I talked to. Uh, Don't let them you're talking here. You're talking to the police chiefs. <laughs> yeah, no. I talked to uh, the Grizzly Lake Fire uh, Fire Chief uh, Christian and. Uh, he, he said that you know this village is pretty well has great they got the, they got their uh, their uh, emergency operation planning uh, plan in effect and uh, he's got a copy of it he looked over it he said it looked really well um, and he says we're doing what we need to be doing and but we just just have to actually reverse in some cases like he like uh, I guess exercises exercises like my friend did the other night mm -hmm. you know, he, you know, he sent out a text of, you know watch out and look for damage and everything else. So that's, you know, just, just to be prepared that way. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to continue on and see what else we need to do. And because uh, like I said, when Washington gets all torn up, we're going to be, as, one, one thing that I did ask the, chief, the fire chief, okay, and I wanted to talk, and he said to talk to, to the Rodney fire chief, Chief Mapleford, because he's more of the resident expert on the trains. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. And, uh, you know, I, I was kind of wondering, like, they would have here the police, you know, with, with the GPSs, do they have railroad crossings that say, hey, this one's down, this one's down, this one's down, this train's moving in this direction. We have a call on whether the fire departments can actually maneuver around it by which, which trains or train crossings are activated. And he said, no. So, yeah, I was going to say, we don't have that. And, no, and no, dispatch I don't think yeah. if, if they would have a dispatch or something, or yeah. if they could be something that could be incorporated in the river this way. Because we were talking about the exact, yeah. the, uh, the Canadian National could block three three roads in the Grays Lake. Yeah. It was a, a yes, mile, it could. mile and a half yes, it could. train. It could actually, it could stop. It could take, you know, three. And so how do you get to our side? Mm -hmm. So. But, so we're going to tunnel. We're going to have a tunnel. We're going to have a tunnel. We're going to have a tunnel pretty soon. We're going to have a tunnel come up under somebody's yeah. bathtub. Did you see how they noticed that? Yes, I did. There's something. Yelp chapels? Yeah. yeah. So, so that's where I'm at. But, okay. So. All right. Thank you, Wally. That's interesting about the railroad. We'll explore that. Okay. Wetlands and open spaces and Great Age Club. Trustee Duper's Bank. When Jeff mentioned the um, recycling that you have scheduled, maybe we will uh, schedule a cleanup at the same time if there's actually ground that you can see instead of white. Uh, so we'll hold that in abeyance and see what the... Or there might be big puddles. Well, we'll see yeah. how things are, whether we be able to do it or not. Okay, and now it's worth considering. The Next Great Age Club is the first Tuesday in March. I think that's the fourth. And we're having a movie. It's a surprise. So if you're interested, come and join us. You get free popcorn. And um, as an election judge, I want to remind everybody that there's an election March 18th. I'm an election judge here at the polling place, which is the Village Hall. And those of you who live in the Round Lake area school district there is a referendum if you go on the school district website which is rlas-116.org you can see all the information about the referendum but get out and vote for sure okay anything else for Jane? No, nope, right. okay kathy would like to make a quick comment our clerk um, when the newsletter went out, I was not aware that early voting, um, when, when early voting starts, we all used to early vote at Avon Township. It is now Round Lake Village Hall. Yeah, Round Lake Village Hall. They moved it. Yeah, for this time only, 
they're not sure if they're going to do it again the next time. The fall next election. election. The fall I'm election. having a hard time talking. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> but um, if anybody's going to early vote, go to the Round Lake Village Hall. And that's on the Cedar Lake Road. Yes. Yes. Just north of 134. Right. So that's it. Thank you. Okay. Broadcast Media Manager, Trustee Daranowski. Well, uh, we had a slow month with our YouTube videos. There was only three views on this for these last couple of meetings, but they were short. So they were very short. They were very short. However, uh, one of the things that they find interesting was that we had somebody in Morocco who viewed our our one of our meetings and also to date one of the things that really struck me was that we've had 1172 views since we started putting these on youtube we, so that's 1172 views oh. on our channel in total since 2010 we started doing this so i think that's pretty extraordinary i really think that that's 1,072 people got a chance to see a meeting that necessarily didn't get to see, wouldn't be able to see because they don't come to here. So I just wanted to point that out as uh, that this is definitely something that's used and something that people find, uh, residents find value in. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's good stuff. Thank you, John. John, I know you need to excuse yourself, so we're going to let you go. I'm giving you a right one. Okay. <laughs> I won't lock you in the trauma. Okay. <laughs> okay, transportation is Trustee Barrett, and we, he will get his assignment uh, in the next day or two. Uh, quick item on special events. Um, I mentioned our last meeting, uh, every time we try to meet in person, the weather <laughs> was either a blizzard or we had a polar vortex. But we have been communicating and exchanging ideas and doing research by email. And we are planning on meeting March uh, 4th. Yes. Yeah, Tuesday, March 4th at 6 p.m. here at the Village Hall if you would like to participate at all. Um, it is going to be a Haynesville Heritage Fest. And I recently met with Colonel Steve Fratt, who some of you may know. He was a resident here in Haynesville. He now lives in Gurney, but he still owns property. He uh, rents out the house he owns in Haynesville. And um, he's a history professor and longtime Civil War reenactor. And he, in recent years, was promoted to colonel and is also capable of actually calling out the whole Northern Illinois Brigade should we need it. But for the purpose of our fest, he is going to provide us with an 1864 Civil War encampment, and we are going to have a small skirmish. We are also going to have a Civil War surgical unit on site, um, as well as some settlers with their wares. Um, many other things are still in the works in the planning stage. We do plan on having some type of musical event in the evening. Um, so, uh, and food vendors and those types of things are still yet to come. So we'll be working on that at the March 4th board meeting, but I'm, uh, committee meeting. But I'm very excited about the idea. Uh, this is the 150th anniversary of the Civil War. I ran 1860 to 1865 when it ended, but 1864 was a pretty uh, dynamic year of the Civil War, and they're calling this the 150th anniversary year. So. Um, Good things to come, and the Round Lake Area Historical Society will also be providing us with their cemetery walk, where you get on a bus and you go out to the East Lake, uh, East Fox Lake Cemetery, which is where the majority of the early settlers of this area are buried. So, very cool stuff in the works. Um, with that, let's move on to business. Item number one is a motion to approve an ordinance for an intergovernmental agreement for building inspection and plan review services between the village of Haynesville and the county of Lake Illinois. So second. Any discussion? Yes. I have a question. Sure. Um, on the last page, it talks about how notices are sent back and forth. And I was wondering if we would include email since there might be some occasion that it would require 
more um, immediate action than just snail mail that takes forever. And I wondered if that should be included as a way of communicating. We are using email for the vast majority of our communication. Uh, it, it, uh, Kelly's pointing out something. I think George is just a, a little confused. Most of the ordinances have when you do an agreement with another party, you have to mail something. Like if you're going to, uh, for instance, give notice that you're no longer going to utilize their services. This is the address that they're saying to go to, but not for our everyday operations of oh. our building. Are they mailing this? We are. If they're applying for a permit or anything, they're still going through us. Yeah. Uh, just the way it, the, um, the way it was worded, it looked like the uh, communication in general was going to come through mail and not email. No, 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 no. no. Okay, no, that's fine. That's a good question. Good question. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, roll call. Um, trustees Derenowski. Oh, he's gone. I'm sorry. Crease. Aye. Duberstein. Aye. Daly. Aye. And Washington. Aye. Motion carried. Ordinance 14 2 184. Item number two is a motion to approve an intergovernmental agreement revising and establishing the CENTCOM E911 Public Safety Communication Centers and Operation Board of Directors and Operating Procedures for the Enhanced 911 Emergency Telephone System. So moved. Okay. Any discussion? Yes. Um, there was no indication as to what was different in this um, agreement compared to the other one. So I wondered, since you're mostly involved with this day to day, could you tell me generally? Sure. The um, it's because we have a uh, new customer. They're not a member, but we're now servicing another fire department. So every time somebody else joins at Sunshine, the intergovernmental agreement has to be revised, and every all the members have to adopt it again. So the, the procedures are the same. So, yeah, nothing else has changed financially. Nothing else has changed operationally. We're just acknowledging that we have somebody else now using the service. And they, they pay into it. They pay into it, yes, absolutely, okay. which is why we like that. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Questions? Roll call. Trustees Kreese. Aye. Duberstein. Aye. Daly. Aye. And Washington. Aye. Motion carried. That ends our business. Do I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We need adjourn. 8.30. <laughs>